50 photos on display along London's South Bank. Behind each one is a story of shock and sadness and heartbreak experienced by their friends and their families. Well, sadly, one of those photos belongs to the brother of our next guest, Shirley Ballas, and she joins us now to share her story. And I know this is not an easy conversation for you to have, so I really appreciate you being here. And I think the whole reason for you being here is just to highlight how important it is to have this conversation and back up that message that suicidal doesn't always look suicidal. Well, absolutely, for sure. But first of all, when I went to, I got the privilege of going to South Bank yesterday and walking um, down that corridor and seeing all those yeah. beautiful faces. And I think seeing my brother there <clears throat> just brought everything back from 20 years ago, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, if I knew now, Back then, I could have really helped in a much better way. So communication is key. I mean, what I love about Calm is that you can be a friend, a family member, or you can be somebody who's not feeling well, and you can really call them and they will be there for you to mm -hmm. chat you through. But it is a beautiful display. You can see the pain you know, etched in, in your face 20 years after that terrible event. What was he like as a person? And you say you could have spotted things. Um, I, I would say that 20 years ago, times were very different. We didn't talk as much back then. It was harder to spot. And so what was he like? Well, first of all, he was a rather large man and he, he was kind of like a powerhouse person on the housing estate where we lived. Everybody loved him. He was a big brother. He was like a father. He was everything to me. We talked every day at four o'clock. He was really the last person that I would ever think that would take his own life. When I look back now, there were, there were warning signs, you know, there was little things that he would say or comments that he would make. And I'd say, oh, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. Because you didn't talk about it. It wasn't something that you came into the front and said, oh, I'm feeling like this. He wouldn't even go to the hospital. He, he just didn't want anybody to know, you know, mother from her generation, you know, things like that were just not communicated. So knowing that, and sort of here we are discussing it openly on, on breakfast television, mm. what sort of things, if somebody finds themselves in the situation where they do have a, a brother, a sister, a loved one, whoever it is in their life, what should they do? Well, well, first of all, if somebody changes a habit, one minute they've been super jovial, the next minute they're down, or they're not bathing, or they're, they're not turning up for appointments, I think these start to be little signs. We have to be astute. And our lives are so packed as mine was back then. It's, you know, oh, you'll be fine. I've had people say that to me in some of the darkest times in my life. Oh, you're strong, you'll be fine. But they don't know what's going on inside. And mm -hmm. even when my brother passed, people said, oh, it'll be fine. Well, you know what? If you haven't been through this, mm -hmm. it won't be fine. You learn to live with it, but it never goes away. And I think yesterday was a, a testament, really, to it's still holding it in the yeah. body. You know, it's hard to ever let go. It was beautiful at the same time to see. Yeah. One yeah. of the one of the principal messages is um, is to talk to people. Just if you are feeling, if you have those thoughts, then to talk to someone. And I and I made no bones about the fact that I went through some very very dark times. And I leaned heavily on my friends, as Holly knows. <laughs> so you've got to talk to somebody because you can't do it on your own. I think there's still that stigma around it. You know, I think women tend to chat a little bit more, I feel, um, in the circles I'm in, as where I've got some friends who sometimes don't feel great, but, and it's hard for them to communicate, to really share how they feel. But, you know, we're in 2022 now. We've got Calm, we've got many organisations. You can reach out, do try to communicate on a small level. And I can say to people, you really have to try and listen. Mm. We're in a moving world, you know, particularly with this social media. It, life goes so fast, you have to just take a step back, a breath, a moment, and listen, and really try to see if your friend or your family or your loved one is having that down moment because where you can perhaps help. Also, you may, you may not feel it, you may not even remotely believe it, but if you are having those thoughts, if you communicate with somebody, anybody, friends or family, um, you can realise that actually, even though you can't see it, it does get better. You have to be very, very careful about behind the mask because many people have this beautiful smile. When I saw those pictures yesterday on South Bank, you know, so many beautiful smiling faces, you, you, you have to 
really look out for different people and how they're feeling. Don't just go off a smile that they look like they're OK, because sometimes people just are not. So it is really listening and being intuitive in this 2022 to really let's all come together to try to help save one life will be mm. miraculous for me. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. It's an incredibly powerful campaign and an incredibly important one. This is a conversation we all need to have more openly. To help save more lives, you can find more information and helplines on our app and on our website.